Hello, Brother Sewing and Crafting family. Angela Wolf here, Brother Brand Ambassador. And summer is in the air for sure. My favorite time of the year. So we have a ton of great projects coming up for you this summer, but particularly today, doesn't really have to be summer. Everyone here probably has a sewing machine, right? Do you have a cool cover to go over it? I don't know. Leave a comment below and say so because Emily Thompson's joining us with a great tutorial. So in the meantime, Say hi, say where you're from. We are live streaming on Brothers Sewing Facebook and YouTube pages, although we are live in the chat today, Emily and I are, so we won't be bringing your comments up, but we can read them all, so feel free to ask your questions. All right, so let's bring up Emily Thompson. Emily, how are you? I'm good. Hi, so glad to be here, and hopefully today we're making another awesome project. Uh, you always have awesome projects, but this one, even though I'm super excited for summer, this one is like for everyone that has a brother yeah. machine, right? Yes, yes. So um, I think this was, I i don't know. This was something that um, brother had asked me to create and it was a super fun project. So if the full tutorial is not up on the Brother Sews blog yet, it will be very soon. So you can also use that step-by-step -step tutorial with photos and instructions to help you recreate this project if this video doesn't give you the details that you need. So that's fun too. And I love making the connection between the brother blog and the live shows and kind of pulling everything together. So today we're gonna, I'm going to show you hopefully how to make a <laughs> custom sewing machine cover for your sewing machine or your serger or your cover stitch. I mean, any machine, that's the beauty of this is it's a custom case cover. So you really can create it any size or shape you want. Um, so let me just really quickly show you the one that I made for my new serger for the Brother Airflow 3000. I made a new cover for it. And um, so I'm just going to quickly uh, switch cameras over and show you that case. And then we'll bring it back and I'll kind of talk through next steps for going through this. So Perfect. let me switch this over. And I know this one. Yes has There's sometimes a little, a little bit of a delay, but yeah, that. I, that. be sure to ask your questions too on here. I don't think we lost her, Emily. There she is. Okay. Hello. Okay. We got you. Yes. All right. So here's the case. Okay, good. So here is the case that I sewed for the serger and it's like, a little bit close, I guess, but um, uh, so usually when I'm sewing machine covers, I do it with the, if you know, if you have the thread, can't even see it. Um, if you have the thread stand, I'll push that down so that it's not, you know, too high. All right. So I'll push this down and then I've made this one with a lining and actually the lining is just scrap fabric that I had and it's not um, very pretty, but that's why it's lining fabric. So uh, I made these super basic, more like a dust cover, industrial. I meant to put embroidery on here, but then I forgot to do it before I sewed it together and I didn't go back, but you totally could add something fun on the front of your case to spice it up, either vinyl or embroidery. And I would like to do that at some point. Um, and so again, this one is very basic, very sort of industrial looking. However, my hope would be that um, eventually I'd make a, a matching set that um, we would, that I'd have like pretty fabric, right? So I really want to make it where it's not only useful and it keeps the dust off my machine, but also that it's something fun and matches what's going on in my sewing, sewing room. So here is my new SE2000. And I love this machine because it's the first one I've had that is Wi-Fi enabled and I can use it with the Art Spirit app and doing all those fun things with that. But it needs, I'm gonna make a cover for it. So um, we're gonna do the same thing. It's gonna be the same gray fabric. And again, this, is, this would be sort of creating my template. And if I liked it, then I could recreate it with more decorative fabric in the future. But what I'm gonna do is just show you how I measure the machines to create the cover. So we're gonna do that and then I'll just switch back to the table 
and we'll cut out the fabric and get all that stuff organized. So the first thing that I like to do is measure the over the top. So I make a front panel that comes over front to back and then we make two side panels. Um, so I'm gonna, on this back, I'm gonna put my measuring tape on the desk and like this piece has the handle which sticks out a little bit. So I'm actually gonna measure over that because that will add more width to this measurement. So you wanna measure the widest part of your machine and it's 29 inches from the back to the front and I'm gonna add one inch for seam allowance. So I would say that is 30 inches. And then to get the measurement of how wide we should make it, we're gonna measure across this way. And again, you wanna measure the widest points of the machine. Okay, so you can do it at the bottom, you can do it at the top, wherever you wanna do it. But make sure like on this side, the turn dial, I wanna make sure that I include that in the measurement. Anything that's sticking out, and then you wanna add about one inch for seam allowance. So I'm gonna say the width of this um, piece will be 19 inches. So we'll have 30 inches by 19 inches and we'll cut that piece, okay? So now let's measure the side panel right here. So you're gonna measure the width. And again, this is sort of the widest part. So don't just measure this little tray right here because it also sticks out over here. So you're gonna wanna make sure that you've got that fully measured and I'm trying to do so it's about nine so we probably would cut our side panel 10 inches and then the height okay so from the top here down it's about 11 and a half so we could cut it 12 and a half wide okay so we'd make it um what I say nine by 12 and a half on that panel okay so those measurements you're going to write down and keep them all Organize, and if you need to draw a little diagram, sometimes I do that, and then we'll go ahead and we'll cut the fabric to those dimensions so that we can um, create this cover. And we do have a little bit more shaping, um, which we're gonna do. So I've pre-cut um, the outer fabric. So we have the big piece. This is the part that's gonna go over the top. You can envision that sliding right over there. And then we have the two end panels. Okay, so these end panels are just rectangles, but your machine is not a rectangle, right? The top is usually a little bit rounded. So we are going to shape a little bit of rounding on the top of um, this side panel after we cut the lining fabric. So if your fabric isn't very structured and you want a more structured case, you can also include a layer of fusible interfacing. And I would fuse that right to the lining fabric and then sew it together how we're going to sew it. So you'll still, you would still only have two layers, which is what I'll have today. But again, if you want just a little bit more structure or, you know, you want it to just look a little more sturdy, you could add that fusible interfacing and that would get that layer. So we'll cut these pieces and I'm going to use the ones that I already cut for my guide for the second cutting. Um, oh, so we'll just like Emily. That yes. fabric is so cute. I love oh, it. Oh, thank you. Yes. It was a special um, a special fabric for St. Jude around the holidays. Like it was a special line that they did for like a fundraising thing for the hospital. So that's that I cool. a couple things out of it. But then I had this piece and I thought, oh, this is so cute and perfect. So I'm going to use it for this project. All right. So I'm... Just going to use this piece as my guide for cutting. And I'll cut off the salvage here. And then we'll cut the width on the other side. On For the gray, I cut just one width of fabric, the 19 inches. And then I was able to cut the end panels from that same width. So I think we'll be able to do this today as well. But I'll start by cutting the width of fabric. And again, you're trying to create two layers that are essentially the same. And this gray fabric is kind of fun. I actually bought it to make reusable shopping bags. Um, Colorado, I think January 1st made it where you had to pay for plastic shopping bags. And I still, of course, do because I 
forget to bring my reusable ones, but I sewed up a bunch of reusable ones so I could have in the car um, to take into the grocery store. And it's like a, a polyethane, it's almost like a plastic, but it's a fabric. And if you've bought reusable shopping bags, it's a very similar fabric. So it's kind of a fun um, fabric to have on hand. It's super durable, easy to use. It's really lightweight. Um, so I've been having fun making projects. And of course I bought a whole bolt because I was going to make like 20 shopping bags and I think about five and I lost steam. But um, <laughs> I, I, I have enough bags to generally do what I need. But yeah, I, I didn't quite make as many as I was hoping for. Oh, but I do have a bolt of this gray fabric. So now I'm using it for all the things. Okay, so now I've got two layers cut of that main piece. And let's see if this is enough to cut these two end pieces. I think it is. So I'll fold this in half. And after we cut all four of these, I'm going to shape them at the same time. And this is important because we're sewing these two layers together, you know, a lining and a main, and then we stuff the lining inside the main fabric. So you do, if you shape the end of the main fabric. You also want the shape of the lining fabric to be um, very similar. So I made I've made that mistake before. I shaped one and then I sewed it up, and then I was thinking, oh, I don't know what shape that was anymore, um, because I again I'm not following a pattern. I'm trying to make this as custom to my sewing machine as, as possible, and I go over a lot of information in, in the written tutorial. So if you're like, what is she talking about? Um, I do show like pictures of how I sort of get that shape for the serger um, in that tutorial. Okay, so now I have four layers. Okay, let's add the fourth. Now I have four layers of fabric here for the end pieces. And I just really do want to make a sort of rounded top. This machine's actually quite simple. The, the serger, I added an angle because you go from that thread bar down to the front and then another angle around the front so it, it took a little bit more this one we really are just going to add um, sort of a rounded shape and because i want it to look as nice as possible i am going to fold this in half here so that i cut the rounding the same on the front and the back you could make it maybe custom a little bit more but um, we're just going to hope that this if i round this okay so you can sort of envision this is the end of the sewing machine and it has the rounded top and this will help to create that. So now what I would do and what I'm going to do is go compare this to the side of the sewing machine and just see where do I do I need, need to take more fabric off. If it's a little bit tall, that way because again, we're going to be sewing this bottom edge together. So we do want to leave this small out. So let's switch over one more time to the other camera so that we can take a look and see is this right shape? And if it is, then great, we can get sewing. If it's not, then we'll come back, just shape this rounded part just a little bit more. Perfect. So while okay. she's switching her camera, great. don't forget that this is also, if it's not on the Brother blog right now, it will be soon. So you can follow all the photos and take your own measurements. And again, we're live in the chat today. So, all right, Emily. Okay, can you, can, you, can you still hear me? I can hear you, but we okay. you are frozen. Yeah, it, it says my page is unresponsive is the oh. alert I'm getting right now. What do you think I should do? Should I, I log back out? Log in, yeah, log back out? I'll visit with everyone while you log out yeah. and pop back okay. in. Okay, thank you, sorry. All right, so you gotta love technology, right? It's great when it works, but when it doesn't, it's really a pain. So we'll wait for Emily to come back. So this is a super cute idea, and I would love to see in the chat. I'm thinking right now of the cover that I would like, because I also have this machine, and it's very easy to carry, take to a friend's house, uh, take home. <laughs> I could even take this one on the boat, I think. But it has embroidery on it as well. So I'm thinking a monogram would be great. For those that have a luminaire or something with a huge hoop, I mean, I'm just thinking outside the box. Putting a piece of fabric in there and doing those decorative fills, I think, would be awesome. So uh, maybe a quilted, quilted look at an applique with a monogram, and you could have these to match each one of your machines. 
And I don't know. That's my idea. <laughs> All right. What are your thoughts on this? All right. So we're waiting for Emily. She logged out. Hopefully she'll be back in a second. Not sure what happened here. Oh, I hear her now. She's back. I'm back. Yeah, I don't know. What was it going on? So I switched the camera while we're doing that. So we don't have to wait for that. Okay. So let's compare um, this piece that I just created to the side of the sewing machine. And it actually looks really good. So I'm very happy with this shape. You can see how the rounding is sort of following the top of the rounding here. And honestly, the rounding is more to the back than the front. This is wider than it is here, but I'm fine with it. Again, if this is not a perfect fit case, it's just a custom fit cover. So whatever you're happy with, if you wanted to shave a little bit more off the front, you totally could, but we're going to go with this. And um, I'm going to say that this is a good shape for my sewing machine. So I'm just going to jump right over here now with this fabric and we're going to sew these together. And again, this is, once you've got your measurements, this is a super simple sewing project. Okay. So this is not, um, advanced. You just need basic sewing skills and you can either sew this on your, um, serger. I'm going to sew this today on the sewing machine. Um, but you really could sew all this on the serger as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my end panels and we're going to sew it into the side of this long piece that we cut. So what you'll do is we're going to start on one end and I'm just going to put a few clips here to hold everything in place, but we're going to clip. And then where you did your shaping is the part where it just gets a little bit tricky. Now I will say your two pieces probably will not match up perfectly. Okay. Because we took, we took measurements, we added seam allowances, we added curves, but will they be exactly the same distance? Probably not. But that's why we sort of add a little bit of extra seam allowance so that it has a little bit of give and, and it all comes together in the end. Um, well, usually, I do have flops, but usually this will all come together and you'll say, oh, okay. So even though, um, you know, maybe it wasn't exactly the same, although look at that. Wow. My shaping must be pretty accurate to what I measured over the sewing machine. Actually, I'm really surprised that on the serger one, I have like an inch. I don't remember if it was on the side panel or the front, but that turned out pretty much, you know, that actually it's a pretty accurate shaping when your side panel is the same as what you measured over the top of your machine. The one thing I will say is when I go to pin the second side, I always start on the same edge. So for that one, I would start on this edge just in case the pinning doesn't end up as perfect as this one. Then if you have a difference, it's on the same side and you can go ahead and trim that or fix that as you go. All right, so you're gonna sew with really whatever sort of seam allowance you included. This is your custom pattern. And I'm gonna do just about a quarter inch to three eighths inch seam allowance here, because that is what I included. And then it's quite easy to sew around the curves. Of course, you're gonna ease those two layers together. And going a little bit slow, makes it very doable. Um, the main thing is to make sure you try not to get any puckers or tucks. And I will say on the serger one, I did end up with on one of the rounded parts, a little pucker in the fabric. So that's the one thing to sort of watch out for as you're blending these two layers together in the two different shapes but we're just gonna go around this edge. And again, just a straight stitch is fine. This fabric that I'm using is non-fray, and but even if it were, it's going to be inside. You know, we're gonna, this is a lined um, cover, so you won't see any of those raw edges, so you don't have to worry about it. But of course, if you really want everything to be finished, you could zigzag or surge any of the raw edges. Now, I wouldn't for this fabric, because again, it doesn't fray at all, but for the lining fabric, that is just a cotton, and so that one might fray more. Okay, so there you go. You can see that end is popped right on there, and 
looks it actually this kind of is reminding me of like a toaster cover or something as well with this rounded shape but um this is it's gonna fit really great on our machine and actually once we finish this um layer we're gonna try it on to make sure that it fits before we do both layers because then we could always make any edits that we need to before we do the second lining layer all right so i'm gonna again take a couple clips we're gonna piece this in we're starting on the same Hey, we started on this side last time. We're going to also start on this side. So start in both pieces that you're clipping in on the same side. And that, again, if you do end up with differences in the fabric or differences in the shape, at least they will be on the same side. So both the, so the back would be the same or the front would be the same, um, depending on where you started. And that will just give it a little bit more symmetry, even if it's not symmetrical to itself, at least the, the same sides would be. All right, so this side is a little bit harder to maneuver and that's simply because now the other side is sewn, but we're still just clipping it in place. You could use pins if you feel like the clip. Sometimes um, when you're doing fabric like this where it has to be held very securely, a clip isn't enough. So sometimes you do, this is a good place to grab pins if you feel like your fabric is sliding and the clips aren't able to hold it. But I think it's okay and I'll just go slow and check as I go around. All right, so now I'm going to do the seam, seam allowance, stitching around this end of the machine. And I'm starting with the main fabric, but it, honestly, you can start with the main fabric or the binding fabric. It doesn't really matter. Um, but if you are starting with the lining, we would need to leave a hole for turning. So um, I'm starting with the outer so that we can do these complete seams around. And then I'll show you on the lining fabric where we're going to leave that opening to make a beautiful finished case. And I'm trying to feel with my fingers here if there's any bumps or puckers again this is going to be the outside and so i want to make sure um, that i'm getting it as smooth as possible around there that's why sometimes just sewing a couple inches at a time and then as you go around lining up the curve again as things they might slide a little bit but making it so we're hopefully and then of course it's smooth sailing when you get down to the back side down that straight edge it's a nice way to finish after going around the curve okay so here's what we're going to do now is i am going to turn this right side out and we're just going to give it a quick little check for fit on the sewing machine okay i want to make sure at this point that i'm liking the fit and of course we won't quite have the structure because we don't have the lining in it um, but this is going to give us an idea of ah it's perfect how it fits. i would say it's maybe slightly wide here on this back side um so if i were doing it again i would make it maybe in what did i have across here 19 inches or something i could probably take it in an inch or a half inch but honestly when we add that lining in there it's going to add some more volume on the inside so this is going to be just fine and it's not too big at all that it looks um bad i did see one so one tiny little pucker here but i can live with that so at this point if you did have something that you wanted to go take out and redo this would be the time to do it before we sew before you sew the lining and then everything would be matching up okay so now we're gonna do the same thing with the lining fabric. So I'm gonna take one of the side panels and I'm gonna pin it on the long edge of the main panel. And this fabric is actually easier to work with because it's just cotton and um, it's thinner. The, the gray fabric definitely has more structure to it and is a little bit thicker and is less um, movable. Whereas this cotton is, you know, quite flexible and easy to do. So we'll just go around here, put a couple of clips, and then we'll sew around that curved edge. 
And then if you feel like you needed to clip the corners, I didn't do that on the other one. We'll take a look before we turn it, sew them together. But you might want to think about um, clipping the corners to get a really nice rounded shape. It's not a tight corner, so you can probably get away either way, but that will just help it lay a little bit. All right, I'm going to do this on the first side so I don't forget. But what I want to do on this lining is I want to leave an opening for turning on this lining piece. So on this straightaway right here, I'm going to leave about a six inch opening. And then I'm going to put one more clip here and we'll sew a little bit there. So I'm going to leave this part open so that we can turn um, the, the cover right side out after we've sewed the two layers together across the bottom. So remind me, hopefully I should remember my short term memory hopefully is good here. It's hasn't been too long since I just said that, but we're going to go around the corner. And when I get to the other side on the straightaway, I'm going to leave that opening for turning and um, that then I won't have to remember on the second side when I'm putting that end in. Okay. So again, going slow around these corners, making sure the fabric is laying as straight and as flat as it can really trying to just make everything lay nicely. Okay. And I, again, I, yeah, I just like to go a couple inches at a time around here. And just keeping everything lined up the best I can, trying to feel to make sure that there's no bumps. All right, so here I am at this clip. And when I get here, whoops, I'm gonna back stitch to really secure that turning opening. And then I'm gonna skip ahead here on the fabric down here where I'll finish the last couple inches. And then we'll have a nice, Hole for turning and it won't be anywhere that we'll see because it'll be on that lining and not anywhere that'll be distracting. Okay, so last piece, again, or you know, make sure that you are doing this right sides together. Why can I not picture how this is going? <laughs> Wait a second, I have like a, a moment where I can't see how these pieces fit together. Even though this is the fourth side that I'm doing the same thing on. Sometimes it just, the pieces look weird, even after you've done it many times. It's like sometimes where you say the same word over and over, and then you're like, wait a second, that word sounds so ridiculous now. But I feel like that's sometimes when I'm putting fabric pieces together. I've done it, how many times have you set a shoulder in or done a cuff, and then one, one time you look at it and you're like, how does this work? I can't my brain just like freezes for a second and then I can't even picture how it goes together. But I've got it now. These pieces will go together just like that. And now we're going to sew this fourth piece in place. Okay. I'm so excited now that I sort of have the template and I have all these measurements. I've saved the measurements for both of these covers that I've made. And I will admit, like I said, the fabric that I'm using is just fabric that I had on hand, sort of using up scraps or ends of bolts of things that I brought for other projects. But I really would like to go and buy sort of um, decorative fabric for this purpose um, and that really fits in my space. You can add, you could make seasonal covers and have fun like Christmas or summer. I think that would be fun to have um, a custom cover for like different seasons or occasions because it not only keeps the dust off your machine and I know our house is so dusty. I like to sew. I don't like to be to clean. Um, and probably many of you who sew have the same problem as me. Much rather be sewing than cleaning. But my machines do get dusty if they're open and I'm bad sometimes I even leave this cover up. And so then there's like dust in there. Even if I just put this down, it would be helpful. Um, but so this is great because it does keep the dust off, but it also um, adds like a, just a touch of color. Or if your machines are like mine where they're 
actually in your main living space, then you can sort of hide them or disguise them a little bit more rather than just looking like big sewing machines right in your space. So, so many uses for making a custom cover like this and it can just be really fun to go along and make this. All right, so now we have the second cover and I'm just gonna show you how this one looks on the machine because I do want you to see that if you just have two pieces of quilting cotton like this, it is a little floppier, okay? So having one fabric with structure, okay? So like, like this gray that is a little bit thicker and stiffer or adding interfacing is a way just to give it a little bit more um, shape, okay? So the ends don't stand as nice with this, just this fabric. So if you were doing just two layers of um, quilting cotton, then I would add interfacing. All right, so that's just a little showing you what that looks like. Okay, so now we're going to put these two layers together, right sides together. Um, let's see, maybe I wanna leave this one right side out and I'm gonna turn this one so I can access, right? We left the turning hole on this lining, so I wanna be able to access that easily as we're doing this. Okay, sorry, it's trying to keep this in the frame here. Um, all right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is match the seams. So we have four seams where we sewed the end panels to that main piece. And so I'm going to match those up and then that will give me a starting point and then I'll put a few more clips in there as well. Okay, so match that up. And then we'll do the same thing over here. Okay, and then I am gonna put just maybe one or two clips on these long straight edges because it's a lot of fabric and I wanna make sure it um, stays in place and stays together. And then the same on this side. Put a couple of clips in here. And then we're gonna stitch all the way around the base of this case. And then we will use, where is it? This hole that we left here for turning and we'll close that up before we're finished. But when you do it like this, then it just makes it, it's a hidden, hidden turning hole. Okay, so now with the two layers together, I'm going to use a little bit closer to a half inch seam allowance on here so that I have a nice sturdy seam on the bottom. And I'm gonna stitch around. Again, making sure that those seams that I just, like that, that I just went over are lined up that will help the shape to be as um, symmetrical as possible because the lining and the main fabric are lined up perfectly. If you have a machine that the shape is different on the front and the back, make sure of course that your fronts are together and your backs are together when you are sewing the two layers together like this. So like on the serger, that I did, the back and the front were quite different. So I did have to make sure that when I lined those up, that the pieces made sense. And I had, of course, the pieces that matched were um, lined up with each other when I did the seams. So it wasn't just quite as simple as lining up the um, side seams, but actually once you do line up the front and the back, it is that simple. It's not overly complicated. So we're sewing all the way around. If you forgot to include or leave a turning hole on your lining fabric, you could at this point leave one when you're sewing open the bottom, so we can close the bottom. If you do that, then generally I find you have to top stitch all the way around the bottom to close the hole and then make sure that you um, sewed all the way around. So this allows me to not have to top stitch all the way around the bottom, but of course you can if you like the way that looks as well. And if you, oh my goodness, we're, do you think we can do it? it? says my bottom thread is almost empty. 
but I'm so close. <laughs> of course, the alert's going to go off about every two inches. <laughs> I'm just laughing. It's only because you're live. Otherwise, you'd have enough bobbin for like an hour. But look at how close I am. I'm so close. I feel like the almost empty means I can still sew 10 inches. Can I? I just have to keep pushing that alert off. Sometimes I'm tempted to turn off the alert, but then I'm like, no, I'll get into so much trouble if I don't have it telling me, telling me that I'm close. I did it. It made it all the way around. Okay. So close. Definitely. Oh, look at this. It's like three inches left. That was, <laughs> but yay. I didn't have to change the thread and we're done. Okay. Oh, I do. I can close that hole. All right. Well, I'll have, I'll grab another bobbin. All right, so let me turn this right side out and then we'll grab a bobbin and um, do this. I'm going to just see actually if I can move this back a tiny bit. I feel like I can't even show you what I'm doing because it's so close there. Yeah, that's better. I wanted when I'm sewing, I like it up close, but now we're going to be doing more showing you the whole thing. Okay, so find the opening here and then you're going to turn it right side out and i like to leave um like i said about six inches especially if you have interfacing or thick fabric in there you're going to want to make sure that um, you're not pulling it too hard through a tiny hole so i like to leave probably a little bit bigger than i need um, but that just gives me extra room to work with and then at this point so here's that turning hole i'm going to go ahead and clip this closed and then I'll grab a bobbin so we can sew it closed. I won't care too much about, I'll just grab whatever color I have pre-wound. So you need to tuck in the seam allowance. So that three eighths or half inch, whatever you are using, you're gonna tuck that in before you pin or clip it. And then we'll just stitch this up. And so that's, again, like why I like doing it on this inside is so you don't really see it or don't have to worry about exactly how pretty this looks. If it's on the bottom, you know, then you, you are going to see it and you have to make sure that it looks as good as can be. All right, let me just grab. We've got lots of options. What's, and here's a white one. That'll work. Okay, so I'll re-thread this. And... And we should be good to go. Plenty of thread on the top. And we'll just, so I, for this one, I'm going to actually stitch really close to the edge. Okay, so I'm just going to, you could also hand stitch this if you wanted, but I'm not even using the seam allowance. I'm literally going to sew as close to the edge as I can while still catching those layers of fabric. So you should have four layers of fabric, right? Because it's two sides but folded over with the seam allowance. And so we'll stitch that closed, sewing those together as close as I can. And then it's all set and secure. Okay, so just stitch it right there, really close and easy. And then we don't have to see it. I wouldn't want this on the right side of my fabric, but really on the inside, that is definitely finished enough for me. Okay, so then the last step is to push this lining inside the main fabric. And if you feel like it's not laying as well as you would want on the bottom, again, you can top stitch, you could press it with an iron. I'm not sure, maybe I will want a top stitcher on the bottom because it isn't... Um, Okay, so I'm going to go, I'm going to actually, as I'm pressing this together, I'm going to put some clips in here and I am going to run a quick top stitch along there. Um, so I think it's actually just going to help this structure lay a little bit better. I feel like, look at this, it's just kind of floppy and rounded and I want a nice crisp edge on the bottom. So I'm going to just fold this over. We'll run a quick top stitch along the bottom. And I think actually that's going to finish it really nicely. I did do it on the serger case as well. Um, but I wasn't sure if I would need to on this one. But I do feel like I do. So we'll just adjust as we go. This is your case, your cover for your machine. So 
you could decide as you're sewing yours, what do you want to do? What looks best? What's going to help it keep its shape best? And this will be really easy to sew because it's just a straight stitch all the way around here. And of course, you could press this, but if you're using this plasticky fabric like I am, you can't touch an iron to it because it melts because it's plastic. So um, it's actually made from recycled plastic. So it's super awesome that they're able to reuse that and make fabric out of it, but you can't iron it. So, but I could iron from this lining side through, and if you have a layer of protection, then you can put an iron on it or turn it way down. I did press on the surgery cover because there was some wrinkles I didn't like, uh, but I had to turn it um, way, way down. All right, so maybe a fourth inch or an eighth inch. I'm gonna top stitch around the bottom here. And this will just give those two layers a little bit of structure there on the bottom. And should make it really nice here. All right. I actually am glad I did that half inch um, seam allowance on the bottom because now that's really easy to stitch on and is giving me a good base here as I'm top stitching. If it's the seam allowance is too narrow, then it's hard to like stitch on it, but this is a nice wide one. I am also trying to make sure that I'm just seeing the gray fabric as I'm stitching and not seeing the white or that design fabric stick through, right? Because it can sort of flip out. So make sure you're just looking at the single layer. It's on there. Again, you could press that and that would keep you from having to adjust as you sew if you already pressed it, but this is gonna be just fine. And then I'm super excited to throw this on my machine and see how it looks. And it's gonna be great for keeping dust off, especially like the summer, if I'm going away on vacation and I'm not gonna be sewing for a couple weeks, which is never happens. But in the summer, I feel like there are periods where I don't sew as much. Just we're, we're busy with other things. And so this is gonna be so great to just keep my machine clean and ready to go for when I do wanna sew. Okay, so now we'll give it a little fluff from the inside, sort of push out those corners, push the two layers together, and then we can just pop it over the machine and take a look, I'm just gonna turn it off, okay? There it is, oh. ta-da! This turned out so cute. Yes, it's and so easy too, right? So this is, you know, a little little pressing, a little fluffing to make it look great. But there you go. I'm super excited about that. I, I don't love the color, but I love the concept and the idea, and it's really going to inspire me to sew another set. I actually like the color, Emily. I think yeah. it looks very trendy. Yeah. Every, I mean, everything in my office is gray. It would fit That's your perfect. If you don't like it, send it on over. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, super fun. So there we go. That is the the um, sewing machine. And then you can see right next to it. Now I have a set. So I just have to keep oh. going and finish the rest of my machines and we'll be all good to go. Those look amazing. So what do you all think? So again, we are live in the chat today, not live with you where we can bring your comments up. So if you have questions, be sure to leave them. And because we pre-recorded this, this should be on the Brother Sews blog, but if it's not, it will be really soon with all of Emily's beautiful photos and her full tutorial. So uh, if you're watching on Facebook, share this to your page. And if you're watching on YouTube, you can come back and watch anytime. Be sure to subscribe yes. to Brother's page so you never miss a live show. Emily, this was a, such a fun tutorial. Actually, when you disappeared for a little while because of technology, yes. Uh, I, I was brainstorming with everyone like, okay, I could see quilted fabric. Yes. That would be so trendy so with a FK monogram. I mean, yeah. so many cool ideas. You know, actually, and I've done this before, like get a quilt from the thrift store or something like that. So it's already a quilt and then you make something for it. And I made a coat for my daughter a few years ago, but how cool would it be to take a quilt that's already done 
then you'd have all those layers. You could finish yes. the seam with bias tape or something and you wouldn't even need a lining. That would be so cute. I'm going to tuck that one away. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Because you were talking about recycled bags. You yes. Recycling a quilt would be a great idea. Then you yes. have it, especially if it was some like a memory, you know, that would be really so cool. Fun. Yes. Yeah. Okay, there, so it does get to a point where you don't you either you don't use a quilt anymore or you just have one sitting around. But how fun would it be to make sewing machine covers with it? And then you could like see them every day. And yeah, that would be so fun. That would be fun. And I like your idea about uh, making ones for different holidays. Although <laughs> I don't know if I would have time for that. <laughs> well, I know it's like a good idea up here, but maybe not here in practicality. Um, but you maybe know, I figure out how to put like a different sticker on it. So it. <laughs> A little applique from the yeah, a little applique that change. I can change it out. Yeah, but for those that I know, a lot of people sew on their kitchen table yes. or um, you know somewhere in the family room or somewhere yeah. where you know everybody sees it. That yes. would be a great way to add it like a decor for a yes. different season and make it blend in. Yep, so fun. Oh, great. Well, it was a great tutorial, Emily. We always love to see what you're working on, brother. Thank you for letting us take over your page. Until next time. Happy Zoe!